PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young, a regular podcast that you can find on all your podcast distribution networks. And remember to please like, share, and subscribe to In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. This is one of the premier pieces of content that we produce at Pro Cannabis Media. I'm very happy to be joined by Peter Doherty, who happens to be, well, someone who has, I think, almost as much experience in media in the Boston market as I do. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to be here, Jimmy. Thanks for the opportunity. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your new Sustainable Cannabis Coalition and why you started this. Uh, so I'm the CEO of a company called Grow IQ that's doing data analytics for how to monitor and optimize cultivation in uh, grows in North America. And um, since I've been in the space for four years, what we found, especially now that it's COVID time, uh, and so there aren't any face-to-face -face meetings, is the majority of the content that's being produced right now from companies that are operating in the space are largely what I'd call infomercials, which is highly problematic because nobody really wants to hear somebody else talk about their company and drone on about what they're going to do and how great they are. Um, and well, there goes so, my business model. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> fundamentally, um, uh, my old CTO and I, uh, we've done a couple companies together. He'd sent me a white paper from Worcester Polytech and it was an, a paper about sustainability. And when I read it, I thought, here's the basis on which you could actually present to the market. So we're, we, what we decided to do was get 20 companies together, which represent inch, each link in the cannabis uh, cultivation, manufacturing and distribution supply chain and have them present use cases about sustainability based on their area of expertise. That was the first part. So it's content that matters where you can learn something from it. And then the other piece of what we're doing, which is, um, uh, probably the most interesting part is largely what you just said, which is amplification of the content through each other. So every time one of these companies publishes, and this starts tonight, uh, publishes a piece of content, all the other companies are amplifying it through their social media. So it's the power of many creating a club um, or a coalition in this case to talk about sustainability in the market in a way that's informative as opposed to infomercials. Now I feel better about my business model. <laughs> yeah, good. Because we want to have, we want to provide a friendly forum in a media environment, a professional media environment that allows the industry to tell their own stories. Right. And, and looking at companies that like you have here that have, you know, every kind of link in the chain uh, as far as a mm -hmm. vertical grow goes um, right. is exactly kind of exactly what we want to do. How did you happen to pick these companies uh, that you're working with? So because I've been around the market for four years, you start to, one of the problems in the cannabis market is 90% of the companies are, um, I, I'll use different terminology than I would usually use, but they're problematic from a um, competency and capability perspective. And so we've been around long enough to know the 10% that are actually operating. So, you know, the blog that launches tonight is coming from a top 10 tax and audit firm called Cone Resnick that's going to describe um, how what's happening in the market from a sustainability perspective and how these other companies that represent part of the, the rest of the supply chain can inform that. And so I guess my answer is we know who's for real and who's not for real. So it includes companies like Cone Resnick, another company that does um, uh, design uh, another one that does construction, another one that does uh, um, control systems and chambers, stuff like that. Conviron and Argus, it's the best known. Argus is the best known controller company in the market, things like that. And TrueLeave, the largest multi-state operator in the U.S., things like that. So right. we got a good group of people together who actually have street cred because they're either generating tons of revenue, they've survived the, the um, uh, or maybe they've put themselves up ahead of uh, the companies that can't operate with competency just by generating revenue and sustaining in the market. Right. 
Um, I, and I noticed you have Simplifia on here too. That's a company we're familiar with here. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Marion's a superstar. Yeah. The CEO. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, like I said, there's, there's a few on here that I, that I recognize for sure. Um, one of the things that we always talk about on this show on In the Weeds is, is the challenges uh, of being in the cannabis space in mm -hmm. a historic time where we both recognize, yeah, it's here legal in Massachusetts. Yeah, five more states got on board around the election time. But, you know, you're still scratching the surface when it comes to a new industry, especially one that's being projected in the billions, if not trillions, in right. five to ten years. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is, how much of a factor has that stigma been as you walk around and talk about uh, what you're doing now? So uh, there's never been a market like this that's the fastest growing market in the world that's federally illegal in the United States. And so the reason I'm here as a data company is because, um, so I've been in the tech business for 20 years, we were talking about. Um, um, in this market, I don't have to compete with Cisco and Microsoft and Symantec and Oracle because it's federally illegal. None of those companies will play in this market. So the reason we started a data company was because there's no competition. Um, the, the, the odd thing about um, uh, implementation of sustainability is because this market's been repressed, there's no science and data associated with it. At least there are, I shouldn't say there's none. It's very limited. Because it's underfunded. There's no government funding associated with R&D in the cannabis space because it's illegal. Anyway, so uh, there's an opportunity for the companies that are the leaders in this space to lead the market because nobody else is doing it right now. It's certainly not coming from the government. It's not coming from the states who are regulating it because they don't know how. You come from a background of media. Back in the day, uh, you could actually... Uh send a, a ratings diary and find out who was actually watching various shows. Right, now right. that you're on the data side, you know that the value is on the back end because the internet tracks all the different search and sure. all the different activity that we all take part in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we recognize that we're being watched 24 seven, sometimes we don't. But right. in this particular case, data certainly is king in identifying who the target customer is. Mm -hmm. And on your, in your knowledge of what you know, can you describe the typical cannabis user? <laughs> uh, I can describe the typical cannabis manufacturer. Okay. Because, so I'm not on the retail side. I'm, I'm business right. to business, right? Right. Our manufacturer. That, that's good. Yeah. 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 And Bottom so line is more of a B2B exactly. play because you've got data, right? Yep. Yep. And the... Um, so the way I describe the cannabis market from a manufacturing perspective, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to use the, uh, the tech market from 20 years ago. So um, my, I, I had a company that wrote the first streaming media platform for the internet. And we talked about that. It ended up getting acquired by EMC, which at the time in, in Hopkinton was the large, largest storage company in the world. The tech market in 2000 went from um, being standalone um, systems that were not connected or intelligent to connected intelligent systems, right? And so all the storage, storage now talks to networking, networking talks to the applications, and thus you have cloud computing and all the nifty stuff that tech does. In the ag market, you don't have any of that. So HVAC doesn't talk to lighting, doesn't talk to um, uh, the, the nutrient systems, the fertigation systems, um, that doesn't talk to the controller systems. And uh, essentially what we're doing is providing a brain. This is grow IQ now, not the sustainability candle coalition mm -hmm. that helps talk to the arms and legs so they can all work in concert from a systems perspective. So the, the reason I'm giving you the example is the ag market is going through what the tech market went through 20 years ago, which is connected intelligent systems. And so when I look at the manufacturer space, all these companies um, need to move to standardized crop production in order to compete when fe federal deregulation occurs. Mm -hmm. And they're all somewhere along that spectrum of, or line of understanding that and implementing that. And what we're doing, the two things I'm doing is one is providing them the system so that they can create that standardized, intelligent, managed system, ultimately autonomous, mm -hmm. and do it sustainably. So that's where this 
these two trails come together. You've got a hemp product and you have a THC yep. uh, cannabis product. Right. Um, needless to say, the hemp product 2018 Farm Bill became technically legal. However, there's been a lot of problems with it. I think recently now the, uh, the Department of Agriculture may have just put out the first hemp rules. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing has been going very fast in this market, <laughs> and yet the market and the sales of it continue to grow. Uh, yep. you, you, made, you made an analogy with the dot-com uh, at the turn yep. of the century. Are we, are we similar to that now? Yeah, except for the the overhang here is state by state regulation, which creates, you know, it's it's a profit killer right. for the operators. Imagine having to set up a different operation in every state if you're a multi-state operator. It's horrible. And the regulations are different in every state. It's like right. it's insane. Is it, is it horrible or a challenge? Uh, I'm not in that side of the business for a reason. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if that's the good answer. That's a very good answer. That was a very, very good, good answer. Um, how important is alternative energy in this group that you have? You know, there's one solar dispensary in Massachusetts, solar yeah. therapeutics down in Somerset. Yep. What, what's your feeling about that? Will there be more? Do you think that eventually Absolutely. we'll see more? Absolutely. They're going to have to, the market right now, the average cost per pound to produce cannabis right now in the United States is somewhere between four and five hundred dollars. Yeah. And when this federal deregulation occurs, it's going to need to be at somewhere a hundred dollars or below. Right. So that gives you a sense of the scale that or, or um, production um, uh, cost reduction that these mm -hmm. operators are going to have to go through in order to compete. And so, the way I like to describe it, describe it is there's a tidal wave coming. The guys who are women wearing swimmies aren't going to do so well, right? Because they, they just ain't going to make it. So you're either on this track of, and, and I, I don't think the majority of operators think this way because they're just trying to make money right now. You know, it's, it's hard to make money. Right. And, and especially you make money now or, and, yeah. and something like that might happen. It could all go away or it could flourish. And it, that's the gamble, I guess. That's the risk reward, I guess, right? Yep, it is. If you're going to be, um, so I'm a pick and shovel company. I'm selling data to the miners that are running into the hills with uh, uh, the picks and shovels mm -hmm. that we're selling them in the horses. And uh, I'd much rather sell shovels than I would be one of the guys digging in the cliffs, personally. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, does does the fact that there are some states that allow home grow and some states that don't allow home grow uh, it, it impacts the industry because the, the laws, once they are launched, they're out there. And, yep. you know, the only thing that can change is a ballot question or a change of a, a state uh, constitution. But I, I, I wonder what what role does a home grow element in the legality of it in the state have on on growing in particular? Uh, I don't I don't think I have a good answer for that because it's on the it's on the home operation side. And, you know, I'm yeah. so focused on business to business that, gotcha. you know, if, if we were talking to, you know, pick one of the operators in, in Massachusetts, we were talking to Rev Clinics or yep. Apotheca or Nature's Remedy or somebody else. Yep. I'm sure that they'd have smarter answers than I would. So I, I don't know that I should answer that question because I'm, it's not my area of expertise to the extent I, that I have expertise. Well, then you've been in the media. You know how to dodge it. That's very good, Peter. <laughs> you did very well on yeah. that. I just want to As say. long as you didn't ask me what my sales quota was and whether I was getting there, you know. I, <laughs> what are your numbers? Are you hitting your numbers this yeah, week exactly. or not, Peter? How yep. many calls did you make this week? Exactly. Oh, God. Remember those days, don't you? I do. Yep. Um, why uh, have you been in Boston your whole life? Have you been here? For uh, I grew up in Rhode Island, ended up in New York when my dad was part of another media company and then came back to Boston and, and for media started right. at, you know, channel seven, channel five, then Fox, and then ended up in streaming media and then stayed in tech since then. Are you amazed that the Boston market, when you started the Boston yeah. market, I'm pretty sure was the fifth largest in the United States. And I'm right. pre yeah. pretty sure now it's not even in the top 10. That's surprised amazing. at that? Yeah, I am surprised at that. Um, 
I don't know where uh, I was going with it. I just, I just wanted to know. <laughs> as long as I don't have to sell to those numbers, I guess I should say I don't care. But <laughs> you, not, no reason to care right now. Exactly. But it is, um, it is an amazing thing when you look at that, and yet the um, four point four million reach is yep. still a pretty large reach for a major market. It, uh, it's still a highly valuable market, no doubt, because it's so influential, right? right? And certainly from a sports team's perspective as well. I mean, we're, we're recognized or we were um, as such a center for excellence in sports and tech and biotech, right? Right. So. And throw in education thing. and throw in your yeah. medical and your hospitals. And yep. It's been a pretty good 20 year run, but Mr. Brady did okay for himself in a new uniform this year. Yeah, he sure say. did. Yeah. You know? I'm glad we're talking about all the important things, Jimmy. That's we're we're well, getting Tom Brady in here. Well, you know, what did you say off the top? We can't just talk about the X's and O's of growing cannabis yeah, and the data. We have true. to make it somewhat entertaining. And that's absolutely again. That's one of the things that I like to think I can do uh, yep. just to make it a good conversation. Um, I guess, uh, Peter, lastly, if you want, we can wrap this thing up. Um, what What's your goal with your sustainable group here? What, what would you like to see happen over the next two to three years? Um, so our group is going to produce three months or three and a half months of content out of 20 companies. And again, as I said, each link in the, the cultivation, manufacturing and distribution supply chain. And I'm hoping what comes out of that is that we're providing information that allows operators, uh, manu um, cultivators, as a, for instance, understand how to begin to apply that so they can take the swimmies off, build their, um, uh, their ship that's going to allow them to survive federal deregulation from a sustainability perspective because Ultimately, sustainability drives the economics of how you operate as a producer, whether it's cultivation, manufacturing, or distribution. So um, I hope what we can provide is lessons learned by these companies that drive sustainability, drive economics, and allow them to compete in a either U.S. market or a global market. And it's going to be both when you know uh, deregulation occurs. There you go. Well, Peter Doherty from Grow IQ and the Cannabis Sustainable Cannabis Coalition and many decades of broadcast experience <laughs> in the Boston market. It's been great yeah. to chit chat with you. I love the reminiscing that we did uh, before yeah. we started recording. Really fun. So uh, please keep in touch if there's anything I can do. Please forward them my information. Happy to, uh, mm -hmm. to wave the flag uh, in, for this industry as much as I possibly can. It's been a pleasure, Jimmy. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. So for Peter Doherty from the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition. I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. Pro Cannabis Media Programming is available live and on demand on our Facebook page at Pro Canna Media, on Instagram at Pro Cannabis Media, on LinkedIn also at Pro Cannabis Media, on YouTube and YouTube Live on Pro Cannabis Media, Twitter at Pro Canna Media, and on twitch.tv backslash Pro Cannabis Media. So like, share, and subscribe to all of our content, newsletters, and shows live or on demand. We are Pro Cannabis Media.